text describing the life and subsequent resurrection of Jesus Christ is not sufficient evidence to support the claim because it is the claim itself. If there were eyewitness accounts of something else extraordinary like flying fire-breathing dragons with magic powers and they were every bit as reliable and mutually supportive as all the New Testament documents including the histories relating to them like uh, Tacitus and Flavius Josephus that would not be evidence of the existence of said dragons because all we would have is a consistent claim and there's nothing even unusual about the consistency of that claim because the authors would have had access to each other's work. If the exact same kind of evidence were available for the existence of dragons as there is for Christ, no sane Christian would believe in dragons. And the reason is that it's an extraordinary claim. And the reason it's extraordinary is because it cannot be repeated, and no comparable instances are supported by physical evidence. Par exemple, the claim that Mithras walked on water is not supported by the evidence, nor is any claim of anyone else walking on liquid water. The claim itself is therefore not enough evidence. If the claim was that a man named Mithras drowned in the sea during a battle, that's not an extraordinary claim, and therefore much more likely to be fact. Why? Because battles take place all the time, and people drown all the time. Nothing new about the nature of reality has to be supposed. On the flip side, suppose it's 500 BC and there's no physical evidence yet known to support the existence of the magnetic force, and it has not been demonstrated, but someone comes to you claiming that this force exists. You are under no obligation to believe this claim. At this point, it is mythical, despite the fact that it will later be vindicated. Nothing like magnetism is commonly observed, and there is no physical evidence to support the claim, so it is mythical. It would be ludicrous of you to acknowledge the claim as anything more than vaguely plausible, less so if you understood gravity as a force. Another example, the Battle of Gettysburg. Nobody claims that the battle hinges upon anything extraordinary or miraculous, like a dragon, forgive the lack of creativity at the moment, flying down and frying 5,000 Confederate troops. The textual evidence is enough to support the claim that the battle occurred because A. It's testable. We can look for bodies and bullet fragments at Gettysburg, and plenty have been found. B. It's reasonable. It fits perfectly into the overall narrative of the Civil War and other verifiable events. And C. And this is really important. It's ordinary. Again, battles take place all the time and are verified with evidence. Nothing new about the nature of the universe has to be supposed to support this claim. What makes biblical claims even less reliable, however, is that they come from a time before widespread literacy, education, or the scientific method. People generally believe more outrageous claims, more certainly, on less evidence. So when assessing what you would call evidence for the resurrection of Christ, think about it this way. Ask yourself, would I accept the exact same kinds of evidence for the existence of magical fire-breathing dragons?